Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition, we're going to do some practice for arithmetic sequences and series. <clears throat> the first problem asks us to tell whether the sequence is arithmetic. So remember, with an arithmetic sequence, we have a common difference between each of the consecutive terms. So let's take a look to see if there is a common difference. So in this case, the first term is 8, next term is 4, 0, negative 4, negative 8. Difference between these two is negative 4, and then negative 4, negative 4, and negative 4. So I have a common difference between each of the terms. So yes, this is an arithmetic sequence, again, because by definition, arithmetic sequence has a common difference between consecutive terms. The next problem, we're asked to write a rule for the nth term of the arithmetic sequence, and then find a sub 8. So the first thing we want to do, let's remember our rule for arithmetic sequence. It's a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times the common difference. So I can find out that in this case my common difference is 1. So I'm going to fill out that value. n minus 1 remains the variable dependent upon n. And a sub 1 is going to be 8. That's the first value. So here's my rule. And now we want to find out what a sub 8 is. a sub 8 is equal to 8 plus, now n is 8, so 8 minus 1 times 1, or a sub 8 is equal to 8 plus 7 times 1, or 7, it equals 15. The next problem asks us to write a rule for the nth term of the arithmetic sequence. And it has the two given terms. Well, I know that there are six terms between a sub 3 and a sub 9. So I just subtract 9 from 3. I have six terms whose sum is going to be 6. So I know that for each term, my common difference is going to be 1. So I'm just adding 1 to each of these. I find the number or the number of terms between a sub 9 and a sub 3. It equals 6. I find the difference between a sub 9 and 12. And I figure out what that common difference is, the individual difference, by dividing uh, the difference between the two values by the number of terms between the two values. So the difference between the terms over number of terms between And so I have 6 over 6. So my common difference is equal to 1. So now I want to write a rule. <clears throat> so I know a sub n is equal to a sub 1, which I don't know, times n minus 1 times the common difference, which is just 1. So now I need to figure out what a sub 1 is. And I can figure that out because I know that there are two terms now between a sub 3 and a sub 1. And so I subtract 2 times the common difference of 1 from 12, and I get 10. So 10 plus n minus 1 times 1, or I rewrite that as a sub n is equal to 10 plus n minus 1, or a sub n is equal to 9 plus n. OK, two more problems, and they're both similar. First is uh, to find the sum of the arithmetic series, given a value of 1 as the input all the way up to 4, with a rule of i plus 1. So we recall that our series formula is going to be the sum of n terms is equal to the number of terms times the first term plus the last term, all over 2. Remember, that's just the average times the number of terms. So I figure out that the number of terms is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So S sub n is equal to 4 times A sub 1. So I plug in 1 for i, I get out 2. My last term is going to be 4 for i, I get out 5. I divide that by 2. So I've got 7 divided by 2. That is equal to 3 and a half. 3 and a half times 4 is equal to 14.
Okay, in the last problem, we're going to do, handle the same type of problem for an arithmetic series, realizing that the sum is going to be uh, <clears throat> inputting 1 through 6, uh, multiplying it by 3. Now, there are really two ways to do this. Uh, one is to use the formula that we learned in the prior chapter, and the other is to learn the formula for sum of an arithmetic uh, sequence. And so we're going to use the latter, um, since we've introduced that rule. Sum is equal to the number of terms, a first term, last term, over 2. So we know our first term is 1, <coughs> it's going to be 3. Number of terms is 6, right? 6 here, 1 through 6. First value is 3, last value is 18, I divide by 2. 21 over 2 is 10 and a half. 6 times 10 and a half is 63, and that's my answer. Second way to handle this is to use our formula, which I said we weren't going to do, but let's just do it for fun. And I know that the formula says that <clears throat> when I have this equation where I have i, that the sum is going to be n times n plus 1 over <clears throat> 2. Now recall that uh, it was just for i, and now I have 3i. So the way that I handle this is just to say 3 times n times n plus 1 over 2, right? So I get n is going to be 6. 6 times n plus 1 is 7. It's 42 divided by 2. 6 times 7 is 42 divided by 2 is 21. 21 times 3 is equal to 63. And you can see that we get the same answer using both of these processes.